and we are at the home of Alice Marshall. Alice, what is your address here? 5030 Northwest 42nd Street, Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. Okay. And just let me adjust this. All right, my name is Carlton Cartwright. I'm the Executive Director for the Children's Coalition Incorporated. All right, and I have a book. Let's see. Um, yeah, and we're at Ms. Marshall's home here. It's just she and I. Uh, let me check it out. And it looks good. Good. Okay, today is uh, June the 15th, 2015. And, um,. What 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 uh, war? What branch of service? And what was your rank uh, when you separated? And where did you serve? So, uh, I went into the Navy in uh, 1975. So I just squeaked by the Vietnam era. Okay. And uh, it was peacetime when I went in. Okay. And um, when I left, I was a petty officer, second class, which is E5. I was there for four years, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I served in uh, Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Mm -hmm. I was enticed. <laughs> okay. All right. Where were you living at the time? When I was enlisted? Yeah. South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So how, why did you join? I was teaching uh, high school dropouts on a college campus. Okay. So we, the idea is it's kind of difficult to get a 19 or 20 year old back in 10th grade. So we thought if they put them on a college campus with people their own age, it's easier to get them to finish their diploma. And that's what we, we taught them, their own classes on the college campus, and then they took the GED. And, that's, and we tried to secure school, further education, or employment after. So we had the recruiters there one day. And um, I was moving from area to area just to see what the recruiters were saying. They weren't just military recruiters. They were other recruiters, too, for different industries. And I was moving from table to table to see what the recruiters were saying. And the Navy recruiter zoomed in on me. And I told him that uh, it was just insane to put me and the military in the same thought. <laughs> well, I turned out to be insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, he was telling me about going to Morocco and going to this place and that place. And at the time, I was saving with a friend. A friend and I were saving to go to Europe. Oh, okay. So... I said, okay, this is a shortcut. So, um, I joined. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did you pick that, that service branch? My dad was a sailor. Uh -huh. And he was the one who approached me. Oh. Uh, the uh, Navy recruiter was the recruiter who, re there were other recruiters there. Right. But he was the one. And I always like their uniforms better. Okay, okay. Okay. Like <laughs> okay. All right. You re recall the first days in service? My first days? Yeah. Oh, what was yeah. That like? boot, boot camp. Where, so you you joined, what city? You, where, where were you? I joined in South Carolina. Okay. But I was, I left from Miami. Oh, so they stayed. I did came they home. Did they fly you down to Miami? I came home. Mm -hmm. And, um, they were going to fly us from Miami. Right. But while we were down there waiting, they decided, no, that we were going to go on a bus. Uh. And while we were waiting, they decided we would fly. So they took us to the airport. Okay. They put me in charge because I was the oldest recruit. Right. And um, we flew into Orlando. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um. All right, so tell me about the first days in service. What, what was boot camp like? Do you remember your instructors, and how did you get through it? Well, 
when we first got there, we were greeted by this sourpuss who told us how stupid we were for joining the military on, on Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. And then they put us through these different lines. We went to different stations to pick up different pieces of our equipment and uniforms and all of that mm -hmm. and tags. And then we were inoculated. I saw so many guys faint. I could not believe it. I had never in my life seen they were falling backwards. I mean, just black back. They just pass out, you know. Really? And I'm standing there watching it. I go, I do not believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we got to the compartments where we were to stay. Uh -huh. And we met our, you know, I don't remember the, the, um, the name of the person who was over our company. The, um the person who, who trained us. Uh -huh. I forgot what they called them. It, uh, I don't know. She was, um, was that she, 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 uh -huh. she, yeah, she was in charge of us. Okay, your drill instructor. Yeah, she was in charge of us. Okay. Uh, very calm and low key, uh -huh. but um, impressive. Okay. So, um, we had to, so I became the yeoman Okay. The yeoman is the person who keeps track of everybody. So I started feeling like a shepherd. Uh -huh. In the mornings, I had to make sure everybody was out right. and everybody was there. Right. And then in the evenings, I had to make sure everybody was there. Okay. And um, so I became, by default, I became the leader, although we had a leader who I also forgot the word they call the recruit leader. Okay. She was the one who did the cadence. When we marched, mm -hmm. she's very good at it. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't remember. I don't remember what they call her. Okay. And we had to get up at six. Right. The uniform of the day was either jeans or raincoat. And raincoat meant it was raining. Right. So. And uh, we went to breakfast, and then we went to class. Mm -hmm. The instructors were chauvinist pigs. Okay. We were... I take it they were all male? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was that women were still kind of new to, they was kind of new to them. Mm -hmm. One told us we should be home barefoot in the kitchen making babies. Uh, another one said he could not understand why in the world we would want to do this, mm -hmm. but um, they were informative. We had to take you know all the courses, the history and uh, the um, the CMJ and um, it's at the uniform code of military, military justice. justice yeah, right. and he kept saying, "Ladies." You will go to the brig. You, <laughs> you kept threatening you, huh? You will go to the brig. I said, okay, we'll go to the brig. <laughs> you didn't believe him, huh? No, I knew I wasn't going to do anything to get me in the brig. Right. <laughs> okay. But he kept saying we right. could. Right. Yeah, I think he was trying to scare us. Okay. And um, we uh, got, we spent time in the barracks at night. Mm -hmm with the director, with the instructor, direct instructor, and she um, she taught us a lot of things. Then she noticed we were gaining weight. Okay. And uh, she decided that we were exercise at night. At night? Yeah. And I told her that was not good for me. Okay. Because I wouldn't sleep if I exercised at night. Okay. So, so how'd that go? Well, <laughs> Since I was the first one up okay. in the mornings, right. that's when I did it, uh -huh. in the mornings. I just, cause it was hard enough to sleep anyway because they had, um, the word just slipped me, sentry. Uh -huh. Each person had two hours to walk the floor. Right. And when you finish your two hours, you wake up the next person who's relieving you. And right. they do, yeah, well, I saw every one of them. 
I saw each shift change, you know, so I wasn't sleeping anyway. Oh. And um, well, all night you can hear the dog tags clinking, uh -huh. you know, and um, some people were crying during the night. So you heard all kinds of <laughs> things. But um, we, so then one day my instructor told me she was sending me to the barber shop. And I knew what that meant. Uh oh. Your hair cannot go below your collar. Right. So I told her if I could just get some bobby pins, I could uh, fix that. Okay. So she said, I give you I give you four days. So she did. I ended up in the barber shop anyway. We became very close. Like I said, we had meetings at night. We got the chance to write our letters at night. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a chance to get to know each other. Right. You know, so it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. And um, then as time went on, we began to see who was not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And um, because we had formed a bond, right. we tried to help the person who wasn't quite there. And at that time, I don't know if they still do it, but at that time they would set you back if you weren't doing too well right. with your group, they set you back to the group behind you. Right. And we got one. And we set her even farther back. I mean, this is when I realized how we had we had really bonded. This girl was so destructive and so chaotic she we just could not deal with her mm -hmm. so we put her back behind us so that meant she was two classes back by the time right. i don't know where she she probably left um swimming we had to uh you had to float on your back right you had to jump off the board mm -hmm. you had to jump off the board take off your pants get air in it, tie it up, and float with this blowed up air, blowed up pants. Right. Yeah, we had to do that. Well, I didn't float. And so, after dinner, all the rocks had to go back to the pool until we learned how to float. Okay. So they say rocks is time, time, time for all the rocks to go to. <laughs> okay. So we went back to the pool until I finally got it, you know. Okay. So um, we went back to the pool. Okay. And um, we, um, oh, there was, Orlando was the only place for women, okay. boot camp. Uh -huh. But there were also men there. Mm -hmm. Well, we had no dealings with each other. We okay. saw them. Right. We saw them marching, and they saw us marching. Right. Well, we could, in, in, in child, we could talk to them. Right. Some, somewhat, you know, it's like, yeah. can I have to catch up, please? Oh, you know. <laughs> so they told us, um, they call them trees. They call the men trees. Okay. And they said only crazy people talk to trees. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, right. So... We went to church all the time because that was one place mm -hmm. where you could mingle. Okay. So they go to church. So everybody went to church. Right. Because that was one place where you could mingle. We um, graduated in, let's see, I went there in June. We were there for nine weeks. And, um, we ended up having what they call the recruits tan because our garrison caps and there was a V on everybody's face. Right. They call that the recruit tan. Okay. You know, and they, knew, they knew you were a recruit because you had that V on your face. Yeah. Yeah. We could not wear perfume because of the bees. The bees? Bees. Bees were out. Wow. Bees were around, and they said the perfume would attract the would bees. Attract the bees. So we right. could not wear perfume. Yeah, you were lucky. We did not have anything 
in the barracks, we could not have anything in glass, like glass jars. Or everything had to be plastic or cardboard or couldn't have anything right. in plastic. So we graduated. And um, by this time, I had um, 45 friends. Okay. 45 best friends. Good. Yeah. And um, we all went our separate ways. Mm -hmm. And I went to a school in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. That was the school for uh, cryptologists. Okay. Well, the recruiter, back to the recruiter, he told me he could get me in intelligence. Okay. And that sounded pretty good to me, so. Right. And he said, since I was good in languages, he could probably get me in uh, the language portion. But I ended up in Morse code. Okay. Well, I guess that's another language, but that wasn't what I had in mind. Right. You know. So <laughs> we went to Pensacola, and we were in these beautiful, beautiful living quarters. They were suites, four rooms per suite with a common area, and each room had its own bath. Really nice. And each room had two people, two people in it. And uh, we were pretty much on our own. Now in school, because cryptologists work shifts, that's how we went to class. Right. We changed shifts. Sometimes you were day, sometimes you were evening, sometimes you were night. Mm -hmm. So that was to get you conditioned mm -hmm. to do that when you finished school. Mm -hmm. Well, they had us, they, they kept us in school while they were doing the background check for the clearance. Right. So they, we, they, we had, they had us on hold. Okay. You know why they were doing a clearance mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. And um, that was pretty nice. Mm -hmm. You know, we could run around Pensacola. And one of my friends had a car. And she was from Illinois. And um, we decided since we were so close to New Orleans, we should go. Mm -hmm. So we got off of... Uh, Shift, 7 o'clock one morning. Right. We took a short nap, and we hit the road. Right. Went to New Orleans. My roommate was one of, it was me, my roommate, and the friend with the car. Roommate was very young. She was just out of high school. Right. And she said that she didn't have any money, but she wanted to go. Well, that meant that the two of us would have to kind of sponsor her. So when we got to New Orleans, we were going into a motel, and she said she would stay in the car mm -hmm. so we wouldn't get charged for her. Right. And I said, I don't think so. Right. So we got to this motel, and the man said, how many? We said three. He turned around and opened this metal cabinet and pulled out three towels. I said, no, <laughs> we won't stay here. <laughs> no. No good. Huh? No. Okay. So we went to another one. Right. It wasn't the best, but we decided we were just going to need a, a bath and a bed. That was all we needed. Right. And it was right before Mardi Gras. So we had a good time. Okay. You know? But... Um, the roommate, the my roommate, we went to this fancy, fancy restaurant, and we were just peeking in, and the woman came to us and said, um, do you want to come in? We said, no, no, we don't have reservations. She said, oh, no, that's okay. You don't have to have reservations. So we go in, you know, the kind with all the silverware, all the, you know, oh, my goodness, we're in trouble now. But we were sitting there, nervous and one of the waiters came and said a bottle of wine for a group of ladies in the navy well she asked us how did three ladies get together and we told her we were in the navy we were coming over for the weekend okay she sent a bottle of wine to our table okay so we sat there we looked at the menu and we're looking at the prices and go oh my god <laughs> So we ordered everything we wanted. We went in the bathroom to figure out the tip and how much each person owed. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And Chris, the one with no money, wanted, uh, what do you call it that you set on fire? Uh, flambe. Flambe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted no money. Right. And that's what she wanted. But we had a great time. Yeah. And um, when I finally finished A school, we went, again, everybody went their separate ways. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when we found out where we were going. Mm. Before that, it was back in boot camp. Mm -hmm. I got to tell this. You go to these men, because that's all there were, right? and you tell, and they ask you, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a pilot. When they got up off the floor, <laughs> I said, well, is there anything else you want to do? I said, no, no. I want to land on those aircraft carriers. I went, Whoa. <laughs> And so one says, you are nearsighted. And he was so, he was so relieved he found that piece of information. Yeah. He said, I was nearsighted, so I could not be a pilot. You have to have perfect vision mm -hmm. to be a pilot. So I said, okay. So I told him I wanted to be an intelligence. So you did not know at that time what was going to happen. Right. But right. that's what they did. So when I was in A school, I knew then, I knew I was going to be what we call a diddy chaser. Right. I was going to work in Morse code because we had to learn the code. Then we had to practice how to do it and um, while we were in school. So when I got to find out, I asked for Road to Spain. Oh, okay. And I got San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I came home first. I had time before I left to Puerto Rico. And they had already set up somebody to like be my sponsor when I first got there. Uh -huh. Someone who was already there. And she met me and helped me out, you know, got me settled into the barracks and everything. And um, it was a small base because the only thing was there was the uh, installation for um, collecting data. Uh -huh. So everybody who was there was doing that. Except for the service people, you know, the people in the in the um exchange, the people in the child, you know, those but everybody else was doing that one particular job. Right. So they had families there and um I got involved in the uh Sunday school, I got involved in the drama group and the uh, Toastmasters. Right. And that was the first time I heard the word distaff. I was a distaff member. Mm -hmm. So I found out that I was the only woman in that group. So I was a distaff mm -hmm. member. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I was very, very active. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like a, it was like a small town. You know, everybody knew everybody. Right. And, um, a lot of people did not leave the base, but I finally, what I did, I moved off base with a friend, and I got a little car, and I was all over that island. You know, my idea was people save all their lives to go to Puerto Rico. Right. I was getting paid to be in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. so I was going to do Puerto Rico. Okay. So I did. We did a lot of San Juan. And I made friends, you know, we had other friends who were off base, and uh, we started a little dinner club. We would go from house to house for dinners. And um, we had um, parties. And so it was, it was nice. It was really, really, I really enjoyed Puerto Rico. We got to go to all the, uh, I got to go to all the other islands. I went to St. Croix, I went to St. Pitts, I went, St. Thomas. I went to all of the saints. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. You know, so um, we um, really, I really, really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So I had um, fun with my job because you put on the headphones. Right. 
and you listen, you turn on your receiver because you had certain channels right. at certain times. And you had these Underwood typewriters. <laughs> right. And you had to hear you what you hear, you type what you heard. Mm -hmm. And it comes out and a lot of times it was um coded. It was groups of five letters. Groups of five letters, you know, straight across and then down. But a lot of it was narrative. A lot of the ones I had was narrative because I turned out to be one of the best. So they gave me the ones that were narrative, and it was in French. Well, it was coming from Africa. And I never took French, but I knew some words. So one day I was sitting there just going along with it, typing what I heard, and I saw coup d'etat. I said, mm. And then I saw some other words that I recognized, and this, this, this didn't look right. So I alerted my supervisor. Mm -hmm. He came over, and when I finished that page, he, he pulled it out of the typewriter, and he sent it upstairs, because upstairs was where the language people were. Right. So he sent it upstairs, and um, it, as it turned out, that was information that made the red telephone ring. Huh. So now I'm a star. Everybody is standing around me because it's going on and on. It won't stop. Right. And everybody is standing around me as I'm typing it. They're standing. And more people are coming to see and they can't understand it because nobody reads French, you know, but they want to be there. Right. And um, so... I went on and on, and they did not let me. When it was time for me to go, they would not let me go because it didn't stop. Right. So they wanted me to stay with it. So they were bringing me candy, sodas, you know, <laughs> yeah. everything to keep me there. Mm -hmm. So finally when I got through, you know, it was done. And then the um, captain sent for me a couple of days later. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to his office. Right. And um, he told me, you know, what I had done. And, how that was commendable and so on right. so, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So, they, when I was in boot camp, uh -huh. my instructor tried to get me to go to OCS. Mm. And I told her I was having a hard enough time in regular boot camp, and I didn't think I could do it. I could do it up there in Connecticut. I just didn't think I could do it. So by this time, I'm getting old because I'm getting 30. Oh. And when I was in Puerto Rico, I was ready to leave uh -huh. because my four years was coming up. Okay. Okay. And again, the commander called me in his office, and he tried to talk me in. He said, do you realize you would be a trailblazer? He said, there are not too many black women, you know, who I, I said, I realized that, but um, he said, we could waive the age barrier, you know, age limitation. You just get that. No, thank you. I'm going home, you know. I think about it every now and then. What would my life been like if right. I had done it? Yeah. But I can't complain about my life, and I didn't do it, you right, know, so. Right, right. You know, if I had a wreck of a life, yeah, I would have thought more about it. Right. But um, I didn't, so. Good. It's, it's okay. That's good. Yeah, I just didn't think I could handle, handle that officer school. The, you know, uh -huh. uh, boot camp was enough for me, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. So I did, I did, when I, when it, uh, I did two years, I was supposed to do two years there. Uh -huh. But when I finished the two years, I had one year left. I did not want to go somewhere else for one year. Okay. So I requested to stay there, and they let me stay. Okay. So. I got a few questions for you. Okay. Um, what did you get through? You said you, said you got some certificates or citations? Yeah. For what? Uh, the one I got on... I, I think I got it when I when I was discharged. Mm -hmm. It was called the uh, Golden Conduct or something like that. Okay. Gold Conduct Award. What was that for? 
Ah, uh, excellent scoop. I didn't read the whole thing. Okay. It's on the wall, but I, it's been so long since I read it. Right. And I didn't read it when I wrote this. I just got gold. But as far as you can remember. Ah, uh, for mm -hmm. um, excellent, excellent conduct, excellent service. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. So you never saw a battle. Mm -mm. Okay, so obviously you were never either a prisoner of war. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, how'd you stay in touch with your family? How did I? Yeah, while you were in the service, how'd you stay in touch with your family? Telephone. Okay, here you go. Um, what was the food like? In Puerto Rico? Well, throughout the service. It was unbelievably good. Okay. They fed us so well. We had, we had surf and turf. They had an ice cream machine right there in the child hall. Right. And um, we, we, we ate very well. Okay. We were getting fat. Did you have, right? <laughs> so obviously you had all the supplies you needed? Yeah. And except for that one time, was there any other time when you felt, or did you even, I, don't, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't take it for granted. How was your level of pressure and stress? In boot camp. Throughout. Boot camp was kind of stressful. I never slept with so many people before. <laughs> it was kind of stressful. Um, and then I was older than these girls. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I lost patience with them. Mm -hmm. But um, they, we, they latched on to me. You know, when, um, when we were finished, they were all calling me um, Yogi. Yogi? Well... I was the yeoman, huh. and so they just, okay. it was a nickname, mm -hmm. yeah. What do people do to entertain themselves? How do you entertain yourself? In and and what did you do when you went on leave? Yeah, no, throughout the service. Oh, in Puerto Rico, what do we do? Yeah. We went to San Juan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we went to the strip. We went to old San Juan. Okay. I would go to uh, St. Croix. I went to St. Croix. Yeah, you so, said you traveled all over. Yeah, I went to St. Croix so much uh -huh. that every time I went, they gave me the same hotel room. Right. Okay. And people on the street knew me. I got you. Yeah. All right. So you enjoyed the people. Mm -hmm. All right. That's cool. Um, and so when you went on leave, you went to all those different islands. Mm -hmm. that you and told I came me about. home. Oh, and you came home and visited. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, uh, did you keep a diary? Yeah. Oh. Okay. But I don't know where it is. I got you. All right. Okay. Um, so do you, you recall the days? What were you doing before you went into service? I was teaching. Oh, all right. What were you teaching? Well, the moment that I was recruited, I was teaching high school dropouts. Mm -hmm. But before that, I was working at a um, radio station, mm -hmm. a country radio station. Okay. And I was in what they call traffic. And that's where you line up the commercials and make sure they're going on time and they don't overlap another commercial. And you don't put a funeral home next to a restaurant or something like that. You know, you make sure everything runs smoothly for, um, and then you have to put them when the, the person who bought the commercial time, you have to put it in the time they want, whether it's drive time or some other time. Right. Yeah, so that was what I did until I got the job of teaching the high school dropouts. And I was doing it in Miami. And the people from South Carolina had heard about me. Right. And they came from South Carolina because they were just getting there started. Right. And they came from South Carolina and asked me to go up. And so I went to uh, South Carolina, and that's where the Navy guy got me. Okay. Um... What did you do for a career after the service? Did you use your GI Bill for school or what? Yes, I did. Uh huh. And what for what? Where? Well, when I already had a degree when I went in. Right. But when I came out, I decided I wanted to um, go into marketing. Uh -huh. So I went to school and got a degree in marketing. Okay. And that's what you've been doing ever since? Then? No, I, I, it wasn't a straight road. It uh -huh. was not. Um, I did get into um, retail, into corporate, and I did do some marketing there. Right. But then it went out of business, and I had a hard time finding another job. When you're in middle management and you lose your job, 
It's very difficult. Now, the secretaries could find a job right away, and the executives could find a job right away, but the people stuck in the middle, yeah. it's kind of difficult. Okay. So, I ended up teaching. So, I um, started teaching high school. Again? Started teaching again? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. And I was teaching English. And then, I decided I wanted to do something else, so I went back to school. Mm -hmm and got a degree in library science. Mm -hmm. okay. And I became a school librarian. Uh -huh. I loved it. Okay. I loved it. When you get a 10th grader who doesn't read, that 10th grader is never going to read. When she is 50 years old, she still won't be a reader. Mm -hmm. But when you get a first grader, yeah. you can make a reader uh -huh. out of a first grader. Okay. That was what I liked. Okay. Um, Let's see. So, the close friends in the service. You said you made forty-five, right? Have you at boot least camp. at least <laughs> in boot camp? Right. Uh, have you maintained any of those friendships? After? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's one right up in Melbourne. Okay. All right. All right. Um, you belong to any military organizations? I did. Uh -huh. It was. Uh, I belonged to the uh, women's. Gold Coast Women's Veterans. Right. And like I said, they had to disband because there were so few of them left. I take it you all did reunions and everything? The Women's Veterans? Yeah. No, they were people who lived in the area. So would you just meet on a regular basis? Every month. Okay. We all met. Right. This last few questions. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Did it do what? Did it influence? The way I thought about war? Yeah. No. Okay. I still think the same way that I've always thought. And what, what, what is that thinking? Um, it's wasteful. Okay. Okay. And last two, we're down to the last two. Um, how did your service and experiences affect your life? It exposed me to so many different people and so many different cultures and um, it exposed me to different ways of doing things. I never would have thought that I would be listening and understanding Morse code. You know, I never, right. <laughs> I never thought about that. Uh, I became an actress. I, did, I was in the drama group and I started acting. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that was different. Yeah. That was exposure that I had not had before. Right. Yeah. But it's the people, the people that I met that I, uh, that really uh, influenced me. Influenced my life. And the experience of being in other places and not being able to do everything I wanted to do when I wanted to do it, if I wanted to do it. Right. But, I was okay with that because mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't going to always be like that. Right. Yeah. So now the freedom, I understand the freedom is sweet, you know, because everybody doesn't get that freedom. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything you feel like you left out that you'd like to add? Jimmy Carter was my commanding chief. In the Navy? Jimmy Carter was president when right, I Yes, I know. I thought you meant that he was in the Navy too, I think. Well, he was. Or just John F. Kennedy was in the Navy, I'm sorry. Yeah. But go ahead. No, I was just thinking because when we had inspections. Right. You know, they were, as they watch, as they look you up and down, they would ask you some different questions. Uh -huh. And one day one asked me, who's the president? And I said, is it still Jimmy Carter? <laughs> Okay. I didn't know why he was asking me that. You know, right. I thought maybe Jimmy Carter had died. <laughs> Who's the president? You know, so, okay. yeah. Well, I want to I thank you for your service. My pleasure. And I also want to thank you very much for a great interview. Thank you. Okay. okay. And who's this lady that you're with in this, in this photograph? Michelle Obama. And what was that occasion? It was during the campaign. It was in 2011, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, she came down to campaign. Right. And the people who had been working on the campaign mm -hmm. got to meet her in a private room. 
and take a picture with her. All right. So before she went out to do the whole big crowd. Okay. So who is that again now? Who is that? Joe Biden. Uh-huh. And that's you in the wheelchair? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And where was that at? It was at a campaign uh, event mm -hmm. down in Hollywood. Right. So. Cool. Nice photographs. Yeah. Very nice. And thank you so much for the interview again. Thank you.